Welcome back to Concept Time, everybody, where we take a look at some of the greatest Fortnite concepts that we can find online. And today, guys, as always, we are going to be taking a look at the Discord server. We have a special edition of Concept Time today. Our amazing community member, Sizzo, has created a Chapter 5 collection that we have already started off on. So if you want to take a look at the beginning of it, you have to go check out Concept Time from another video. But guys... Apologies, concept time has been lacking still. I want to look at these concepts. I'm excited for these concepts. We will continue on with concept time. But before we get into this, I do want to say hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I'm your guy with too many YouTube channels. Let's take a look at this amazing, amazing concept by Sizzo with help from Carlo from our amazing community, Season 3, Chapter 5, Dynasty. Taking a look at it, and we're starting it off right here. It's... It, I... The way that these concepts are made, and it, it, there is a disclaimer for this. A lot of this has been used by AI, especially for the skins. I don't know about the background. I don't know if this is from creative mode. Regardless, doesn't really matter. I don't care at all. I'm excited to take a look at the art. I'm excited to take a look at the concepts. Let's keep going through this. So, starting off, we have the Battle Pass overview. And I got to say, these skins look beautiful. I love this one. I love this one. That's really, really cool. And we have the map concept. So, Big changes to the map concept over here, and I believe the map concepts have been done by Carlo. Please correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section down below, but regardless, big changes to the map. I am so here for it. Fall, Fallen Olympus, so this must have been made, yeah, this what I'm pretty sure this this was definitely made before the season out. Regardless, regardless, it doesn't really matter at all. Let's continue on to the battle pass. We have Nusha's Legacy. Taking a look at different skins, we have Tier 1 being Nina. Really cool skin there. Really, really cool skin, man. I have tried my hand at AI skins, and I can't, like, make them to... I, I can't make them to this extent. Like, these look like they could be, like, solid Fortnite skins. Like, look at this one. Look at this one. I am so down to see Shen. It's a... I love the knife in the mouth. It's a really cool-looking skin, man. Really, really cool. This one, Streamline, looks like a skin that we've seen before. It's like a little bit of a biker skin. I don't know if that's what we're going for because it doesn't really, like... Maybe I'm just taking a look at this. Maybe it's the colors that are going with the season theme because I don't know if this is necessarily supposed to be a biker skin. <laughs> Let's keep going. Then we have Kato moving on. We have, this is the one that I like, Eternity. Oh my god, an omniversal entity that contains the remains of all the previous islands. Eliminated opponents watch maps fall from previous seasons, reform on her body. That is such a cool idea for a skin. Guys, this is, this is my favorite skin that anybody's ever done with the concept. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. Out of all the concepts we've ever taken a look at, this is my favorite skin. The idea of different maps coming on her body. It, <laughs> pause. It looks so cool. I love it, man. That is absolutely beautiful. You got the back hole black, back bling as well. That, oh, my God. I absolutely love it. Then we have Poe. Oh, no. <laughs> I still haven't watched that new movie, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. Then we have Nusha. So Nusha is part of, is the, seem to be the main character of the season, right? Nusha stands as the reigning monarch of the Eternal Dynasty, although her vast powers and wealth spawn from making a pact with her evil spirits, which now follow her rule and all that know this are hunted down and swiftly dealt with. Very cool skin. It looks like a little bit of a, uh, I want to say better version of Mizuki, to be honest with you. Then we have Wukong as a bonus skin, a very cool looking skin, especially if we have a season like themed around this Japanese mythology over here. And I still wish like, I hope Epic Games gets into that, but then again, they might just throw some collaboration over it. I'm not here to hate on Epic Games. I just, I, I miss, I miss my Greek weapons, guys. I do, I do. Then we have Battle Pass number two, Summer Sunset. And this is what the idea that Sizzo has been talking about, which is very interesting, by the way. Having two Battle Passes per season, I think this would be like, a really, really cool addition. So let's continue on. Summer Sunset. Tier 1. Spectrum Sergeant. Looking really, really cool there. This skin looks beautiful, actually. And then we have Sunset it, Street Racer. Sorry, I had to, it took me a little bit of a second to, uh, <laughs> to read that text there. And then we have Macy. Continuing on, we have Rift Surfer Savior. That's cool, actually. Another take on the Fox Clan. I actually like that. The, the pink lightning going through his body. Really, really cool. And then we have Midsummer Duck. Wasn't this... A skin concept by Epic Games, Midsummer Dusk. Am I remembering that incorrectly? I might be. Doesn't really matter. Let's continue on. Then we have Coral Cry uh, Cry Cryptid. Sorry, Coral Cryptid. I, it's, uh, the text is throwing me off a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a cool skin. I love what he called the moss on the side of it. Really cool. Then we have Chompy. We love to see Chompy. Chompy, Chompy with the Chompy glider. I'm here for it, dude. Then we have POI, POI overview and new weapons. Let's get into them. 
We have Descendant Dynasty. Descendant Dynasty is the home of the ruthless sorceress Princess Nushia, who uses her powers to keep anyone unloyal to her out in the city walls in a, excuse me, away from her wealth and hidden secrets within her palace to eliminate to obtain her mythic yokai blade. Let's continue on to Dauntless Dominion. Dauntless Dominion is a large spooky Sakura forest shrouded in thick white fog. Within it lies a mysterious eerie temple filled with spiritual items. Some say this is where Nushia practices her alchemy and conjures powerful spirits. You can also find her eternity here. You can find eternity here as an NPC. Such a cool skin, man. So cool. Then we have Glittery Gallows. It was once a luxurious retreat for Midas during his time on the new island fighting against the gods, but now a new powerful has arrived, one that is used for sheer firepower and brute force to take over the island swiftly and effectively setting the gods into chaos and in hiding from this new threat. Jules now works here in rubble foraging a plan to save her father. So Midas needs to be saved. I'm here for it, man. Fallen Olympus stands as a monument to Nusia's true strength, besting even gods. Nusha had taken many pictures of this palace, showing, uh, showing it as her clear message towards anyone that did not swear loyalty under her name. This POI is now watched over by Nina, the exiled sister of Nusha that swears to take revenge on her sister for this reckless show of power towards the innocent. Interesting how one character could take on the gods that way, but super cool. Dragon's Fury Assault Rifle is a new weapon, a slow first rate but heavy damage assault rifle with the ability to swap from incendiary rounds to hit scan with trade-off of minor damage reduction. Uh, that's an interesting idea and that's something that Sizzo did talk about before creating this concept which I think is really cool. The idea of choosing whether you want hit scan or not, just uh, damage switch off, I think that's a healthy medium for Fortnite weapons but to be honest with you, would anybody really use the non-hit scan? I don't know. <laughs> Dragon's Wraith Shotgun is a semi-auto shotgun with the ability to swap between incendiary rounds with hit scan with a trade-off of lower damage. Love to see it. Let's continue on. Dragon's Envy Sniper Rifle. This sniper deals heavy damage and shoots incendiary rounds at the cost of a slow rate of first. A scope can be swapped out with iron sights for a thermal scope. Dragon's Range Launcher, which is interesting, fires a giant firework that deals large damage before splitting off into smaller fireworks that deal additional, smaller damage to opponents. I absolutely love that. We also have the Dragon's Malice Sidearm. Fires one shot before needing to reload. This weapon works similarly to the Flintlock Pistol and will launch both you and your opponents away. However, can also be charged to first an even more powerful shot, dealing additional damage and setting the surrounding area on fire. That's definitely a weapon I would be using. We also have the Dragon's Passion Blunderbuss. This weapon works as a hybrid between the Flintlock Pistol with a range of a Ranger Shotgun. Ooh, two of my favorite weapons. I am here for it. We have Nusha's Mythic Yokai Blade. This melee weapon deals high damage and has both a cloaking ability which turns you into near invisible to opponents and gives you a speed boost until effects run out or if you attack as well as a phasing ability which phases you in front of the nearest enemy. Every time you eliminate an opponent, you will gain one friendly ghost NPC that will help attack opponents for you. This weapon can only be obtained by eliminating Nusha. That's a really cool idea to have, like, ghosts spawning behind you. I like that. Dragon's Scourge Hammer. This melee weapon works similarly to the Shockwave Hammer. However, instead of shockwaving away with the hammer, you can instead use it to pull opponents towards you, or, excuse me, towards you, for you to hit them. So a little bit of a combination between Anakin's Force. I am, I am, I like it. I like it. Let's continue on. <laughs> Storyline. The sudden, range, the sudden reign of the gods over the Fortnite Island has caught the attention of another faction that have made their way onto the Fortnite Island, a faction known as the Internal Dynasty led by Empress Nusha. This faction once originated from a different universe created by the Big Bang. However, Nusha craves power and control over all the lands she can find in order to achieve this goal to make a deal with an ominous spirit from a dark corner of the Omniverse that has granted her new powers in order to achieve her goal. With her new powers, Nusha and her dynasty make short work of the gods, forcing them to retreat back into Pandora's box. However, after taking control of the island, Nusha learned of a man on the island that could, that could grant her infinite wealth to expand her empire. Before long, the dynasty had captured Midas with Nusha, using his golden touch to create gold for her people. Though now Jules and Jonesy have been visited by a new ally of the sister of Nusha that offers to help them in their efforts to free Midas and stop her sister, th excuse me, through her sister, through, she also warns of an impending threat, one that threatens the safety of this new Omniverse before it has even started. Are we talking about the nothing over here? I think so. If that's the case, I, I do love me some nothing. Let's get to you on to Fortnite Festival, introducing Juice World. Rest in peace, Juice World. I still, I would love to see a lot more Juice World coming into Fortnite. So we have some Juice World songs coming in here. And do I not see All Girls Are The Same? That is one of my 
favorite. Oh, and we have different new jam tracks. I thought they were all going to be about Juice World, but oh, ugh, Uptown Funk. Ugh. Ugh, I hate Uptown Funk. I'm just, <laughs> I know it's a little bit of an unpopular opinion, but I actually don't like that song. Uh, but I'm down to see it. I'm down to see it. Let's keep going, though. We also have the new festival stage, Seaside Stadium. That's actually beautiful. That's actually really, really beautiful. I like that. Let's continue on, though, to Rocket Racing. We have the new Battle Pass cars, which, oh, the golf cart looks so good, dude. The golf cart looks so good. And then, okay, we still have new tracks and new modes over there. I wasn't sure if there was more. Dynasty Walls, Midnight Skyline, Salty Streets, and Sunset Skyline. This actually looks really, really nice. I like the way that they're taking a look at a little bit like of a... I don't know how else to describe it. The circle picture into them. I think it's a nice touch there. I think. Oh my god, excuse me. My apologies. We also have new modes. Unranked playlist. All maps are randomly selected with no skill-based matchmaking. Death Race. 12 players fight for placement. Each lap, the player in last place is eliminated. Oh, that's actually such a cool idea. Is that a unique idea? I've never heard of that before. I'm not I'm not too big into racing games myself, but that's actually super cool. Grand Prix. And of course, we all know how Grand Prix works, but I would love to use Death Race. That's a solid, solid idea. Could you imagine the fight that you would have if you're like towards last place? I would love it. Let's continue on to LEGO Fortnite Season 3. New Biome, the Candylands. This new biome is mostly non-hostile and a safe and secure place for setting up villages or bases with mainly new sweet palaces to explore within. That's a good idea. That's a good idea to have like... Something nice and calm like that for you to build your stuff. Anyways, we also have new prefabs and builds. This new biome offers many colorful and delicious buildings for players to unlock and create your very own gingerbread houses. And a new gingerbread train vehicle with the gingerbread carts that can be attached to the back and used to transport both player sand supplies across long distances. That's a really nice touch. We also have new skins, the candy guard and the gingerbread man. That's super cool. And we also have Sweet Tooth Singer and Gummy Bear Brawler. <laughs> That actually, dude, you know what? That's actually such a good idea. That fits so well with the theme for Lego, like in a Candyland. Every time I think of a Candyland, though, I think of the, excuse me, the, I can't remember what Mario Party it is. I want to say it's Mario Party 5. The Candyland map, regardless, doesn't matter. We also have a new mode, Fall Guys. Fall into the new Fall Guys mode in Fortnite, including Fall Guy versions of all Fortnite skins. I actually didn't think about that when Fortnite Fall Guys comes out, because Hypex said it was what? Between 15 and 45 days. I understand that's not necessarily like... <laughs> a really good timeline on it but still yeah they they probably would do that too i can't wait for that myself let's continue on you know, into season four being nightmare including map and storyline so moving on to what seems to be a zombie theme season nightmare i don't know something for four nightmares i hope we get a new thing over here so we have some new pois over there haunted hillside seemingly being a new one over here it's weird looking at a map now and just having the Olympus gone, or the, excuse me, the Underworld gone over here, because it was bigger, right? It was bigger. doesn't matter. Of course, again, this concept was made before that, but let's get into the storyline. After Jules, Nina, and Jones successfully managed to free Minus from the captivity of Empress Nusha, her kingdom began to rapidly fall into chaos due to Minus no longer being able to provide her with the gold needed to sustain her rapidly growing empire, and soon, her people and soldiers that followed her began to become poor and managed to successfully overthrow her and banishing her out of her own home. However... She still had one final card to play. With no other option, she allowed the spirits that granted her power to fully take over her body. However, this proved to be a mistake. The spirits now in control of her body told her that she was merely a pawn in a much larger plan for their master that had been watching over the island for millennia, even before the Big Bang, and now with the birth of this new Omniverse and the Seven now part of them, they will not stop our war until our world is part of them too. The spirits proceed to start a curse which has sent the island into eternal night and suffering mon <laughs> summoning monsters and ghouls that now cause chaos across the island. To counter this, Jones and Midas hire the best monster hunter on the island. Who could that be? I don't know, actually. Anyways, <laughs> one Midas' first shadows Astrid to put a stop to the monsters across the island and put a stop to Nusha's curse before it's too late and the island bathed in eternal darkness forever. This season is truly a nightmare. Okay, well, I was jumping the gun there a little bit. My apologies. Anyways. My favorite part is this, and for those of you who don't know, Sizzle, I've been talking to Sizzle a long time at this point, because, like, I don't know how long it's been now at this point. We have so many amazing community members that, like, we've been, it's something that I love, and sort of take a little bit of a pause here, something that I really have loved about this YouTube journey of mine is all the cool people that I met, like, getting to know everybody, and something, and I want to say, I want to say it's been a couple years now, regardless, it's been a long time, something that Sizzle and I have always always agreed on is skins we have like the best taste not not the best taste i know it's an it's a subjective ma matter but i'm talking like if sizzle's coming up with skins i already know that i could love it like i i look at survey skins that come out and i go yep sizzle would like that one you know what i mean so that's always been really cool and that's what i've been loving about 
getting to know a bunch of you through this YouTube journey. But anyways, let's get into the skins. And that's the reason I brought it up is because it's exciting because I know Sezo has been creating these skins and I already know that I will like the vast majority of them. Like he just literally just created the skin that I don't remember the name of it, but the one with the maps, one of my favorite skins, or my favorite skin that I've ever seen out of Fortnite concepts. Anyways, we have tier one being Astria. Oh, it's a different Astria. Okay. I thought it was going to be Astria the crew skin. Regardless, very cool looking skin over there. Then we have Reaper, which is a, is a different version of the Raven over here, which is again, super cool. Ghostface. Ghostface, Benny, you watching the video? <laughs> Ghostface finally coming in. Anyways, we have Wendigo, which is a very, very cool wolf skull trooper looking skin. Then we have Skinwalker. That's cool. With the chains on him. Love that. That looks super, super cool. Then we have Joro Gumo, the blood mother of all spiders, big, small, hairy, and scary. That is a solid skin right there. That's one of my favorites so far. I really, really like that. We have Hidokiri, which is, uh, it looks like it's a little bit of a Raiden-ish skin to me, which I still absolutely love. And then we have Empress Nusha. So we see Empress Nusha and, oh my god, that's that's a very, very cool looking skin. Again, an arguably better take on Mizuki. Nusha, once an Empress of her own kingdom, now controlled by the evil spirits she made deals with, they will not rest until their curse is complete. Very, very strong battle pass over here. And we also have another battle pass, Fright Night. I don't know why Epic Games doesn't make multiple battle passes, man. It seems like it could just be free money because what Fortnite player wouldn't buy that? You know what I mean? But anyways, let's get into it. We have Sasha. And it's always like, I've seen, I think that we, from what we've seen over here, um, it seems like this is a little bit more of a fun part of the battle pass because the skins seem to be a little bit more lighthearted. But we also have Terrett Taylor. Have I seen these skin concepts before? I think I have. Yes, I've seen Zombie Zoe because I loved Zombie Zoe. Very, very clean looking skin. I love Zombie Zoe. Yeah, I think I've taken a look at these skins before, Sizzle. Maybe they're from an old concept or something. My apologies. I don't remember exactly what it was. I've taken a look at a lot of Fortnite concepts on this channel. Then we have Envy. Another, I love the color scheme on him. I love the glowing part of his shoulder over here. Very, very cool. Now we have <laughs> Mimsy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this would definitely be a meme skin. That's actually a good idea for a skin. I like that. Then we have Azalea, another plague scourge doctor. I love the little bird on his on his fingers there. Super super cool. And then we have Apollyon, very cool skin. I feel like I've seen the majority of these skins though. Then we have Freddy Fazbear, the head mascot for everyone's favorite pizza chain. Man, <laughs> Fazbear Entertainment is not liable for any damages or disappearing that take place on property grounds. That's funny. That's funny. Let's continue on to the POI overview though. We starting off with. Thrilling theater. Ruined Reels has been turned into a spooky drive-in theater filled with Halloween decorations with many Fortnite original horror films playing on the big screen. You can also take on Azalea the Stage Master to obtain this Mythic Poison Fiend Hunter crossbow, which deals additional poison damage to opponents, and the Mythic Pumpkin Launcher, which drops candy upon explosion. That's actually a nice touch to the Pumpkin Launcher that we love to see. We also have Spectre Station. Reckless Railways has been turned into a ghostly city filled with go gothic houses, filled with Halloween decorations, and Valeria's house is now owned by Mimsy, the award-winning looper with the cutest Halloween costume. Eliminating Mimsy will grant you her mythic candy AR and mythic broomstick. The train once owned by the society has also been cursed and now takes on ghostly purple and green color scheme and is now a steam train with passenger carts with the front of the train now being able to instantly eliminate players that stand in front of it while moving. That's actually... Man, <laughs> sorry. Mimsy's a really funny skin to me. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. To Haunted Hillside. Hazy Hillside is now filled with Halloween decorations and Haunted House mirror maze and is always shrouded in a thick fog. Beware Wendigo prowls through this PUI and incredibly fast and strong. However, eliminating them will grant you a mythic Howler Claws, which now comes with double jumping, increased speed, and much stronger damage. Yeah, that definitely needed a little bit of a buff, eh? But let's continue on. Yokai Yard. The new outpost for Yokai Empress Nusha after her evil spirits took over her body and cursed the island. They set up their base operations at what was now Lavish Lair, now turning it into a giant gothic castle swarming with ghouls, which will swarm and attack enemy players that dare enter the grounds. You can also fight against Empress herself and get a hold of her mythic Yokai's cursed sword, which deals large damage to opponents in close proximity, and you can also use it to summon three ghouls at a time to fight for you. However, the max cap number of ghouls increase whenever you eliminate an opponent. I actually, I, I like that idea a lot with the entire gimmick she has going on over here. I think it's really cool. But anyways, we also have Malevolent Manor, 
A large gothic hotel was once Grand Glacier has now been turned into a base for monster hunter Astria that has made a deal with Jones, Midas, and Jules, and Nina to help put a stop to Yokai Empress Nusha's plans and stop the curse placed upon the island before it's too late within the manor. You can fight Astria yourself, however, be warned as Astria works differently from other bosses and will have increased health, shield, and deal more damage depending on how many players are in the POI with her. However, eliminating Astria is highly rewarding as her Demon Slayer axe is a one is a one hit kill and works like a gravity hammer from Halo. <laughs> and works as a gravity hammer from Halo, and her mythic high stakes shotgun will gain additional ten damage points per shot depending how many players with the POI Astria when she was eliminated. Dude, this would make people cry. This would make people rage on Twitter, and then I'd be over here making another heated X slash Twitter drama video, which I'm here for, but I would actually love a one-hit kill weapon in Fortnite. Like the Infinity Blade, it was so much fun to me, and I know that wasn't a one-hit kill, but I love one-hit kill weapons. I think it's hilarious, but anyways, let's continue on to the new weapons. Demon Slayer Axe. This weapon works like the Gravity Hammer from Halo and deals 125 damage at close range. Okay, so it's a one-hit it's a one -hit kill without shields. Okay, I, I took that wrong. At close range with Astria's mythic version... Oh, never mind. <laughs> At close range with Astria's mythic version being a one-hit elimination. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I keep reading when I, I keep commenting and jumping the gun, and then like the answer to that is right in front of my face. Anyways, Demon Slayer's shotgun. A semi-automatic shotgun that can be changed to have spread or slug rounds with 12 rounds in each magazine with the final round dealing explosive damage. The Demon Slayer Assault Rifle, a scoped, uh, scoped slow fire rate assault rifle with detachable scope and the final bullet dealing explosive damage. Uh, final bullet dealing explosive damage is a very interesting way to play because then you would wait to reload your weapon, which is a little bit strange, right? We also have the Candy Assault Rifle, a 30 round standard M16 that deals the same damage as standard Scar with the benefit of opponents dropping different candies when eliminated by this weapon. That's You can't go wrong with that. We also have a bunch of returning items. One of the most underrated weapons, by the way, is a zero-point pretzel. I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't been big on the wood stake shotgun. Eh, it's an okay shotgun to me, but I love everything else in there. I love absolutely everything else in there. Let's continue on. Introducing Cursed Tarot Cards. These new tarot cards work similar to Augments, but with a catch. Every tarot card you gain will have a positive effect, but also a negative effect too. Okay, okay. That's a really fun way to take a look at it. We have... The Curse of Slow Fight. This card will give you give the player unlimited glider redeploy, however, at the cost of decreased movement speed by 20%. That's actually a really interesting way to go about a new mechanic. I like that. Curse of the Glass Cannon. This curse grants a player two times damage on every weapon for the whole match at the cost of their health being halved. Okay, I like that. Curse of the Unseen. You can now, I think I went that, I went that backwards. Sorry about that. Curse of the Unseen. You can sometimes turn invisible at random. However, you can also be pinked at random for other players to see you. Curse of the Binding Weapon Rarity. This increased, however, this is increased, oh, sorry, Curse of Binding. Weapon Rarity is increased, however, you cannot drop items. Sorry about that, I didn't understand that, but that's actually a really, really cool idea. I like that a lot for a new mechanic. Honestly, what a great idea. Let's continue on, though. Introducing Shadows. With Yokai Empress Nusha's Curse plaguing the island, it has also had an effect on Reboot Vans. During Season 4, when you are eliminated, you will immediately come back as a shadow from Midas' Revenge. The only way to turn back into a regular player again is to eliminate someone else. When a shadow is eliminated, that's a game over for that player unless you are playing in duos, trios, or squads. In that case, if you die as a shadow, your reboot card will drop as normal for you to be rebooted. However, eliminating the exact player that eliminated you as a shadow will grant the returning player better loot when returning as a regular player. Super cool. Again, Midas' Revenge Shadows were some of the, I know I say that a lot, but I've had I, some of the most fun I've ever had playing this game, man. I thought it was awesome, dude. I really did. Anyways, a new Fortnite game mode, Fortnite Nightmares Infection. We already know how this is going to go. Infection LTM's details. This new LTM is a squad-based LTM where 100 players are dropped into the island. However, 10 players are randomly selected to become shadows. Their job is to eliminate all survivors and turn them into shadows before they can escape. The under, other 90 survivors are able to work together in order to fend off the increasing horde and escape the island on one of three getaway buses that will drop onto the map during the midpoint of the game. However, each getaway bus can only hold up to 10 people, so it's best not to be late. Ammo is also not easy to come by in this mode, so survivors must work together to conserve their ammo unless they join the Horde of the Shadows. Any survivors that do not make it onto the getaway bus automatically lose. Little bit of a, a getaway touch to it, which I think is really cool myself. We also have an Infection LTM reward. Escape to the island five times to unlock the Axian Vanguard skin. A very, very clean looking skin. Anyways, we also have Season 4 for LEGO Rocket Racing and Festival. 
New biome, Haunted Hallows. This biome is filled with spooky forests and ghostly ghouls waiting for you to find as well as large gothic, large gothic towns filled with Halloween decorations. As expected for an update to LEGO, but it looks really cool. It looks really, really cool. Then we have ghosts and oh ghosts will only attack you if you attack them first and are followed are found in halloween towns we also have swamp monsters this new mob can only be found near water source and are hostile to players that come across them very cool like additions to lego over here and i love ooh, grimlock looks cool and the mad scientist interesting interesting okay that's a, that's a, i actually like like the way are these made by ai as well because i'm taking a look at this and i'm like okay that looks pretty cool for lego to be honest with you i'm getting caught up on details that don't matter it doesn't really matter it's just it, it's it's really cool to me we also have Two new, brand new cars coming. Actually, the this one, the Ecto-1 kind of looks like the DeLorean, to be honest with you. And then we have Hollow Hill Climb, Eerily Elevation, and Devilish Drop. These all look absolutely amazing. Hollow Hill Climb is an interesting idea for a map because you would have to, of course, like, I don't, oh, Hill Climb, you're probably going up. I was like, well, which way are we going? <laughs> and then we're going to go and get to the top. I don't know, probably drive off. I don't know. It looks really cool, though. Really cool idea for different maps. We also have Michael Jackson. For a Fortnite festival with a new stage, ghoulish grounds. Looks super cool. I, I'm a big fan of Halloween and Christmas stuff, guys. You, if, I'm sure you know that by now. But anyways, also a bunch of new jam parks. Uh, jam, jam parks. What am I saying? Jam tracks. And we, the only one that I don't like, my <laughs> apologies, is Moves Like Jagger. I hate that song. There's, <laughs> But actually, I'm surprised they didn't go for something like Despacito so far. Because Despacito, Despacito would sell like crazy same with michael jackson stuff to be honest with you. but anyways we have the season four event the awakening the event starts at a makeshift outpost just south of yokai yard the spirits fully prepared for a fully scale assault from the likes of astria jones minus and the rest of the loopers that seek to end this curse before it's too late and as the moon shines it's brightest the battle begins Astria and the Loopers charge towards the yard, gunning down any spirits that get in their way. Now, much larger Nutria, Nutria, now fully overtaken with the power of the spirits have over her, start to press the attack back as the Loopers, all while start controlling Nusha, begin the final step to completing their curse. The spirits through the body of Nusha smile and crack her with a mocking, la with a mocking laughter. You've come here believing that we merely wished our, your world to be shrouded in eternal darkness. This new world that you have is so swiftly created for yourselves was made out of pure desperation. Even the leader of your previous universe, the one in charge of your precious order, that is so desperately clings on to their lives instead of accepting inevitability, which would not have been so reckless as to just reset the universe. Interesting idea there. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Which leads, you, which leads us to you, Remnant. The spirits controlling the tower, Nusha glazed down, pointing to Jones at the lesser spirits continue to fight the Loopers, although Astra and the Loopers seem to be gaining ground. You once worked for such an organization, yet you wave around from such an order to a merry band of seven individuals that despise such a group for what they consider immoral actions, yet... While you fumble around believing to yourself you've always been fighting for the good fight, you and all those who fell before you always forget to ask yourself what it is you were all fighting for. Your collective foolishness and your eagerness to do what you think is good is the very reason you lost so quickly to our master. Were it not for the one you call the paradigm's quick decision to scuttle the zero point and the ego of our master's herald, you and your universe would have had to accept the inevitable and join in the everlasting nothingness as a one and soon after you rest, the omniverse would have joined you too. That's, oh my god, let's keep going, let's keep going. The spirits controlling Nusha raise her hand, letting out a spark of pure dark energy as it hits the bubble surrounding the island. The bubble shatters into millions of pieces, exposing the island to its newly created universe as thousands of galaxies, including that of rocket racing and festival, can be seen from the island. At last, the mask has been lifted and screams of despair forced aside while your loop still remains its effects of shielding our master's vision. No longer impede the grand design of their future Go now, Remnant, and those that wish to fight stand here as your once imagined order did before you. You may flee your fight, however, that nothing is inevitable, and your time to accept togetherness as one with it are numbered. The spirit-controlled body of Nusha stopped fighting. It stood still and looked down at its chest. A visible end of the sword had been impaled through its body as it began to shrink down to regular size as Astria pulled her sword out from her spirit's body and cooked its head towards Jones, giving him a devilish grin as her body began to liquidate slowly before coming a small puddle of chrome. As the spirits looked at Jones, it spoke its final words through this time. It was not the spirit speaking, but now an eerie and corrupted voice of the once thought to be dead foundation. Our mission was everything, Jones, but we had the seven exist together. Now, all is one and as nothing. Uh-huh. Is that, is that all? Because that is very... Very interesting. Okay. 
Wow. Wow, that is actually a really cool idea for an event. That That's actually, like, I could get into that storyline. Isn't it sad, man, that we can come up with better Fortnite storylines as of right now? That's really cool. I love the idea of the way that we are introducing the nothing. I think it's really cool personally. Anyways, Fortnite Battlegrounds is a brand new game mode. Fortnite Battlegrounds is a new RTS real-time strategy game set in glitched universe within the Omniverse where factions like the IO7 and last reality were never destroyed and are always in a constant war with each other. This mode is a 3 versus 3 strategy game similar to Halo Wars where you and your allies can pick characters from different factions, each with different units, vehicles, and aircraft and abilities to help turn the tide of the battle. When the game starts, each player will start off with a one base and it is their job to work together with their teammates to gather resources by building supply pads at their bases, scavenging or destroying enemy bases. The first team to destroy their opponent's bases wins the match. I love that idea too, man. This entire concept has been nothing but fantastic, fantastic things that I really would love to see in this game. But guys, with this new game mode brings us to Chapter 5, Season 5, which is where we are going to take a pause for this concept. It is taking Sizzle and Carlo a long time to finish their concepts, understandably so, because did you take a look at the stuff that's been in here? It's been absolutely incredible. So we decided to take a look at the first five seasons or the first four seasons, and then we're gonna take a look at through five and 10 once the rest of the concept is done. This chapter five collection is grand. It's great. I am excited to take a look at the rest. Guys, let me know what you think about the concept down below. And guys, I want to get back to concept time. We will have another concept time very soon. I'm thinking like a week or so. I am excited. I want to take a look at concepts. This just get, just, just made me excited for more chapter five concept stuff, man. It's It also makes me sad in a way that we can come up with better ideas in Epic Games at the moment, which, hey, you know what? Hopefully they get back on the ball. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think about the concept down below. Go show Sizzo some love in the comment section and the Discord. If you have a concept that you would like to share, join the Discord. Pin comment description down below, guys. Thank you very much for being here, Sizzo. It's been an honor to take a look at the concept. Thank you very much for letting me make this into a video because I absolutely loved it. Thank you for watching, everybody. Check out the video on screen right now. We have another concept time video right there. Take care, everybody.